Praise the Lord, Temple Nation. Happy Sunday to you. It's great to be back with you today. We just thank and praise God as always for your presence. Welcome to our home. We thank God for Bishop. We thank God for all of you all this morning. We just excited about what God is doing. I want to open with a quick word of prayer. I have a couple of thank yous to do and two very, very quick announcements, but really powerful announcements. And then we're going to get into what the Lord has for us this morning for this, our Sunday morning devotions. We look forward to this time with you all. We missed you last week, but we're back and we're ready, prayed up and ready to talk to you and see what God does today. Good morning, Bishop. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen, amen. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for your love, your tender kindness, for keeping us, God, for protecting us, God, for our church family, our temple nation, God. We just thank you for such a loving people, such faithful people. We thank you, God, that you're choosing us in this season to be a blessing to your people, God. Now keep us and be with us. We invite you into this moment that we give to you our devotion to you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bishop, do you have any opening words before I walk through a few well, things? Go, go right ahead. Oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, certainly want to thank everybody for honoring our great man of God last week as we celebrated his 33, 33rd Temple of Praise pastoral anniversary. We had a wonderful time. We had Pastor Ricky Staples come up from Beckley, West Virginia. So it was a family reunion at the same time and we just had a glorious time. So thank you for all the prayers, all the well wishes for everything that you did, the phone calls, the text messages, your monetary gifts for honoring him. And we just thank you for what you did for him. And we celebrate him continuously. And we praise God for his life, long, long life. We thank God. And we just are excited about what God is going to do in this next year. So we thank you from the bottom of my heart. Certainly want to call out the Master's Touch Ministry under the leadership of Bishop Vincent Charity. He hosted our family for dinner and our guests from West Virginia. Thank you to you and all of your staff for our Temple of Praise event team, for our men's ministry, the Family Life Ministry, anybody who had anything to do with it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. Before we move on, we do have two announcements. One is hot off the press and one is just a reminder. So today, Sunday is the last day to register for our, let me get the name right, our Youth and Young Adult Ministry Back to School Community Day. We're going to bless the community. We're going to have a major event on next Saturday, August 10th, 12 p.m. right here at the Temple of Praise in our parking lot. They have a whole day planned for you all. Haircuts, food, fun, Anything that you need, screenings, health checks to get your children ready to go back to school. And guess what? They're giving away free book bags, not just an empty book bag now, filled with all of the supplies you need for your school. We've been collecting donations from the ministry all week long, all month long, and the ministries have really come together. But if you want your child to have a filled backpack, we need you to register. The last day to register is this Sunday. Make sure that you are registered today so that we can get you set. If not, if you miss that deadline, come on out. We'll make it work anyway, and you can come and partake in all of the fun, and we just thank God for you. Secondly, the one hot off the press, our Women's Weekend is September 13th through the 15th, and we are excited. All of our speakers have confirmed. We thank God for Jesus. They are so amazing. So on that Friday night, we have one of our daughters in ministry, Dr. Victoria Harris from Firehouse Ministries. And listen, if you have never heard her preach before, you're going to be in for a treat. The Lord uses her mightily and her gift of preaching is amazing. So come on now and plan to be a part of that on Friday, September the 13th. And that Saturday, I am so excited, but I'm excited about everything, but I'm really humbled by this particular woman of God. We have living legends amongst us, particularly in the DMV area. We have Dr. Pastor Susie Owens of the Greater Mount Calvary Church Ministries. We just, to see her operate in her gift, 
to see her minister is something to behold. So we're going to do a rare master class. We're going to honor her and give her that time to impart to us what God has given her down through the years. So if you are a first lady, if you are praying about ministry, if you are in ministry, if you want to see how to manage your family and operate between ministry and marketplace, and the list could go on, she's it. She's anointed and in this season of her life, just being in her presence will bless you. So prepare for that. And we're going to close out on that Sunday at the 9 a.m. service. We have the newlywed herself. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's pastor, but we will go with First Lady Crystal Macklin Nelson. She's going to come and minister to the women of God at our 9 a.m. service on that Sunday. So again, it's hot off the press. Save the day and you will be hearing more information in the days to come. So thank you for allowing me to share those announcements with you. And so as we pray, prepare to transition and we quiet our spirit as we prepare for our devotion. Just want you to set the atmosphere, just quiet yourself and so that you can be here with us as we share with you what the Lord has told us. So I'll, I'm going to set it up just to introduce it and turn it over to the Bishop. And he has something that he wants to share. There's three scriptures we're going to walk through. Um, before I give you the scriptures, give you a little background. We've been following the Lord. The Lord has been leading us. We talked about communion. We talked about serving God and we talked about being in his presence and not wanting to leave his presence. Um, today is similar. It's in that thread. <coughs> we want to talk about why the wicked prosper and how does it tie to what we've been talking about? We've been talking a lot about serving. And for those of you who are servants at heart, you know, sometimes it may feel like that you're underappreciated and that everybody is getting rewarded and doing other things and you're serving and you may feel left behind or left out. Not so. Right? Serving the Lord really does pay off after a while because a servant is not looking for anything tangible. That just comes with the territory of just being here with the Lord. But for the servant's hearts to encourage you, to let you know that God hasn't forgotten you. And don't worry about what you may see or what you may perceive that others are doing. You keep your eye on Jesus and don't worry about the wicked prospering because it's temporary. It's a moment in time. But what you have as a servant, what we have as servants is eternal. It's eternal life. So I want to share a couple of scriptures, three scriptures specifically with you. I'm going to read through them and then I'm going to turn them over to um, this man of God to walk through us. Amen. Do the first one first and then I'll comment. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. So let, yes, sir. We'll start with Psalm 73 then. Well, this, right. is, this is um, the writer of Psalm 73 is Asaph. So this is coming from the third book of Psalm when the focus is about um, the sanctuary. The theme is from Leviticus. And if you think about Leviticus and Old Testament study, you'll know that it's all about his presence being in that sanctuary. So you will hear a lot about the sanctuary. So let me give you this. Psalm 73, it says, truly, truly, God is good to Israel even to such are of a clean heart. And this is King James Version. Verse two says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. And verse three says, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Bishop Staples. Yes. Well, oftentimes we try to uh, compare what other people have to what we have. Mm. And the awesome thing about that, the scripture kind of answers itself. Yeah. Because when you listen to Asap talking, mm -hmm. he said, my feet almost slipped. Mm. I almost went back. Mm. And he did that, he said that because he knows he's not supposed to have nothing. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be blessed. Yeah. It's like you got two, two or three kids in, in your family, and you start giving one kid ice cream cone, he's the baddest one out there, <laughs> and you give him ice cream, and the other two ain't getting anything. Now, it will be, it's natural for them to come and say, Daddy, you gave him mm -hmm. ice cream, and you didn't give me any, and he's the baddest kid out there. Yeah. You know? And that's what he's saying. He said, the wicked 
how do they deserve and we don't deserve anything. Uh, but God is trying to teach us a lesson. Yeah. He knows that the thing about the wicked, the thing about the wicked, they're going to be wicked. Mm. If God don't save them, if they don't turn their entire life around, they're going to be wicked. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand that don't worry about the wicked. The mm -hmm. wicked, uh, I was laughing about that this morning, the wicked are standing on what? <laughs> Shaky ground. Shaky ground. <laughs> Slippery ground. <laughs> and, and they might just, you know, fall at any moment. God is trying us. He's testing us to see if we can watch somebody else be blessed. And it, it's a part of it and not get jealous. Yeah. It, it, it's one of the main aspects of trusting God. I can trust God to bless me, to bless my family mm -hmm. at some point. <clears throat> like the like song says, and, and it, within the context of that old song, serving the Lord yeah. will pay off after a while. After a while. It makes, the song gives you the indication that you're going to get blessed. Mm -hmm. Not right now. But a little bit later, mm -hmm. God has promised mm -hmm. to bless us. But the test is, can you handle somebody wicked being blessed? And you watching them misusing the blessings of God, mm -hmm. cursing God, mm -hmm. not attending church, not giving, not doing right by any means. And can you see that happen and they get blessed? They buying the houses, they buying the cars. They're being blessed with children. They're being blessed with this. And you watch them and you look at them and you say, God, you seem to be unfair. Is he unfair? Mm -hmm. Or is it a test? Oftentimes, true people of God, that God has selected to be his child, mm -hmm. he will put you on display. Yeah. I, used to, I used to say say this prayer oftentimes. I'd be praying, Lord, use me. I still say it, mm -hmm. but I say it hesitantly. But I know he will use you. He will use you. And sometimes God using you uh, feels like he's abusing you. Mm -hmm. And you will go through, and the little stuff that you talk about, that you worry about, this person said this and that, it will be so far from how you feel and what's going on in your life that it won't matter at all. Uh, you, when, you, when you're at a real low place, you can see somebody coming to church and they be dressed and then you get bothered. But when God, when you when you go into that fire, yes. you don't care what they got on. Mm. You you just glad <laughs> to be in the service. Mm -hmm. You you're not just looking around and he this and she this and he talked to her and she talked to this one and they got this and they got, you, you ain't thinking about that at all. You you waiting on a praise break mm. or getting ready a, a star in or a praise. Or start one. Yeah, because when you think about it, how good he's been to yeah. you, you want to praise him. And that, and that drops off everything that's on your shoulders. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. You said something. There's a cost to your yes. Yeah. When you give God your yes, you are keeping your eyes on him. And whatever you go through, no matter how tough it gets, if you keep your eyes on him, and that's what happened in the scripture. He said, he said, but as for me, my feet were almost gone in verse two. My steps had well not slipped. He took his eye off of God. Mm -hmm. And then he started noticing things that he would have never noticed before had he kept his eye on God. Mm -hmm. And you said very specifically, the answer is in the question. Yeah. And if you keep reading Psalm 73, the answer comes, I believe it is around the 17th verse, I could be wrong, but he said, until I went into the sanctuary, until I went, the sanctuary. Until I went in the sanctuary, if you think about the time, was the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Until I put my eye back on God, mm -hmm. it, none of it made sense. I was mm -hmm. jealous, I was mad, I was angry, I was bitter. But now when I shifted into the sanctuary, mm -hmm. when I got in his presence, it didn't matter, just like you the said. The sanctuary is not a building. It's not a building. It is not. It's a place of worship. When you, go and, when you start worshiping God, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with what you're dealing with, you find out that uh, things are going to be all right. You start talking to God. God will let you know. That, that, that's why prayer, <coughs> prayer is like an adventure. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you start praying, I mean really praying, really praying. You've been on your knees for like 
30 minutes, and it don't seem like it's but two or three minutes, mm. you start going to another country. <laughs> you pray for everything, everybody. everything. And, you, and, and you know that when you get into that zone, that uh, he hears your every cry. Everything. Amen, glory be to God. So now I'm gonna go to Jeremiah, right? So we have these questions, why? Do the wicked prosper? Why do good things happen to bad people? So Jeremiah in chapter 12, one through three, Jeremiah says, Lord, you always give me justice when I bring a case before you. This is the New International Version. So let me bring you this complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are evil people so happy? You have planted them and they have taken root and prospered. Your name is on their lips, but you are far from their hearts. But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and test my thoughts. Drag these people away like sheep to be butchered. Set them aside to be slaughtered. What do you think about that, Bishop? When Jeremiah was talking, he was noticing that he was laboring for God. Yeah. And there were other people that weren't doing anything. And he said, I got a case. I got something I need to talk to you mm -hmm. about. And uh, other folk that are not doing anything and they're going against you. Mm -hmm. they are, they're, they're trying to besmirch your name. As we were talking about, his name is worthy to be praised. Yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to do everything that they can do. And they're happy. Hmm. And they got funds, and they got this. And what I wanted to say is, this, is it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, that uh, w wealth, when he, when he says that why does the wicked prosper, mm -hmm. uh, w wealth is, is not money. That's right. That's it. It's, it's, not, it's not money. It's not. Well, when people tell me he's a prosperity preacher, uh, he, she's a prosperity preacher, and I'm, I'm a preacher. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I do preach is that God, I say, I have children. Mm -hmm. I have children. I raise children, six children. Mm -hmm. I got kids. Yes. And I make sure that when I was raising mm -hmm. them, they got something to eat. That's right. That's prosperity. I walk in the house with a bag, I do whatever I need to do uh, because I got children. God has children. He's going to take care of us. And when we see him doing something, or it looks as though he's doing something for others, and he's not doing it for us, uh, it'll make us want to question him. But it's, at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, the devil blesses people mm. financially. Mm. He blesses because he, he's got all them tricks. You know, you're going to add, you're going to get this, and you're going to do that. I, I don't want the devil's money. Mm -hmm. He got it, mm -hmm. but I don't want it. Mm -hmm. The devil got ways that people can make money right now. I don't want that kind of money. That's right. And it's important to realize that, that, that God is going to do something great in our lives. Money is, is not connected to prosperity. Right. It, it's like prosperity particularly is when I can come home and have a dinner, come home and laugh with my kids, watch TV, go for a walk, go to the movies with the kids, the mm -hmm. grandkids. That's prosperity. That's wealth. That's wealth. That's wealth. That's wealth. That's it. It's not, see, you, you, you can be in a big old house by yourself. Ten cars outside. Exactly. Uh, Rolls Royces and this, that, and other. Whatever, whatever. Closet whatever. full of clothes. Uh, all, all, all of that. And not be happy. Because when you with God, he gives you joy. Yes. He gives you something above happy. Because happy is an indicator of what's happening. Mm -hmm. You got to realize that. And, and that's kind of where we were with that. We were talking about that. And uh, he was upset and he was bothered. He said, they're so, they're, they're so happy. They're so excited. They're prospering. And we're struggling. Yeah. We're struggling. Yeah. I mean, it, exactly. It's the same question. <coughs> And the same answer, right? Yeah. You've taken your eyes off of what God has called you the, to do. The, the, the reason that the uh, uh, the answer is in the question yes. is because 
he, they realize that I'm his child and I'm supposed to have. I'm supposed to have. I don't care what nobody say. They talk about me like a dog all they want to. I do not believe mm -hmm. that God, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. I do not believe that God wants his children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To be homeless and starving yeah. without. Yeah. I don't believe it. You can't make me believe mm -hmm. it. And, and, if you, and if you say, well, God's supposed to bless you, but how much, he can bless you as much as he wants to. Mm -hmm. well, you're going you're to be upset because you're, you're not going to like heaven. Sure. If you get to heaven, Ooh. you're not going to like it. He's going to have streets of gold. You are not going to like heaven. His throne is golden. Twelve gates to the He's sea. got all kinds of mm. adjutants and angels and people flying around hollering and screaming. Oh, Holy. You are not going to like heaven at all. And here we are represented. It doesn't mean that we have to live in a great big mansion, castle, nothing like that. But we ought to be comfortable. God will make us comfortable. Help us to bless and raise our children. Yes, God. Send them to college. Let them be lawyers yes, and doctors Jesus. and whoever else they yeah. want to be. And give us the money to pay for the school and all yes, of that. All of it. Thank he you, can Jesus. do that. Thank he you. don't want you poor. Hmm. Don't want you poor. And you ain't got to cough talk to me. You ain't got to send me no letters. You ain't, you ain't got to come by the church to my I want to see you. I don't want to see you. Stay where you are because you're not going to change my mind and make me think that my God, my God, I don't know who you serve, but my God wants us to be without. Excuse me, people. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I'm just taking that in, Bishop. I'm touching it agreeing. He doesn't Amen. Want I mean, when you, when you serve a God. Yes. God blesses us, and sometimes He tests us. He'll test us. He'll let you see somebody doing something mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever. And, and but, but that, uh, that that happens to us. It only happens to us in the immaturity of our walk. Because when you've been walking with God for a while, you don't get what somebody pull up in. Mm -mm. That's a nice car, son. I ain't seen you in church in a while. <laughs> but that's a nice car you got. Because when you love God, it doesn't make, when you drive, ride to church or drive to church, it, when you're thinking about God, you ain't thinking of what you're driving. Mm -mm. You're trying to get to church. You're trying to get there. You're trying to get there so you can be in the sanctuary, yeah, that's right. the building with the other saints and giving God's that's name right, praise Bishop. and glory. That's right. Because that, that's what that's about. It's as your soul prospers. Beloved, yeah, I wish yeah. above all things. That you be in health Jesus. and prosper, even as your soul prosper. Amen. What does it profit a man Amen. to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You, you need God. You need God. You need him. That's why I don't bother with people. Sometimes people do stuff. And too many walk with me. Bishop, you hear so and so, so and so did whatever. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't stop you from doing something. Yeah. I can talk to you and I can pray for you, but I can't stop you. That's an internal decision. And a lot of times folk want to uh, get to the place where they want you and me or other ministers and pastors to stop what you want to do, walk with somebody, choke them and tell them to stop doing what they're doing. Now now we send it. Now we're going to jail because <laughs> we're trying to make them stop doing something that we don't think is right in the sight of God. God will judge all of us. That's right. That's right. So he keep will, your eye back. He, he will keep your judge. eye on the prize. He will judge us all. That's right. And and it's stored up for the righteous anyway. Right? You're looking at a temporary moment, a temporary situation, and you're comparing those things that are tangible to what is intangible. We're going to start on something really important tomorrow. Okay. And... Uh, I'm coming out. I'm the scripture that I'm dealing with tomorrow is Sunday today. So, <laughs> today. It's today. <laughs> the scripture I'm dealing with today mm -hmm. deals with uh, how the, the God leaves the ninety and nine. Yes. And He goes back and gets the one. Oh, back and get the one. That that's what's important. Yes. That that that's what's wealthy. That, that's what we're supposed to be after. 
That's right. The souls of that's people. That's it. That's it. That's what that's we what are you, That's why we're serving them. That's as a commission. The so we'll go to church. We, we, I, we, we pray and we ask God to give us a message uh, so that we can speak to the hearts and the minds of the people who come and know God's going to work. Thank yeah, God. yeah. We, we, we're going to be praying for our children that are unsaved, yeah. our neighbors, yes. our relatives, yes. our co-workers right. that are unsaved. We're coming. And we're, we're going coming. to ask you, do you know the Lord? That's right. I used to, I remember my, my grandmother, I loved her, mm -hmm. I loved her so much. And, but every time she saw me, she said, you, 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 still, you still out there? <laughs> I, I ain't know what to say. <laughs> I, 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 you know, but sit down, boy, I'm talk to you. And she would talk to me. I remember right before she died, they told me she was in the hospital and she wouldn't talk to me. So I went, I went to Beckley, got in as fast as I could. She was in the room by herself. Mm -hmm. And she was turned to the wall looking out the window. So I walked around on the other side of the bed and I, and I said, Grandma. And she turned and she looked at me and she, she said, oh boy, I'm so glad you're here. I said, I heard you wasn't talking. She said, I ain't talking to them. <laughs> she said, I'm talking to God. Mm -hmm. When you get close to death, she was saying, I'm talking to God. And there's a time that we just got to understand that having a conversation, like the old song says, just a little talk with Jesus. That That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm full, Bishop. I'm full. I'm thankful because even leaving the 99 for the one, we're reminding people, we're coming after you. He hasn't Go forgotten you. Get him. We're coming after you. I have I, this. This is the confidence that I have in God yes. and in myself. Mm -hmm. That if you get him to the temple Ooh. of praise, I got enough Holy Ghost Listen. in me Ooh, Jesus. to preach them out of hell. Mm. I believe that with everything that I got. Mm. You may say, whatever you want to say about me, it doesn't matter because it just shows your immaturity concerning me and who I am. That's it. I'm a child of God. If you don't know that by now, you just don't know it. But the thing about it is I do believe if you bring that individual bring in, in, in that building and God give me the opportunity to stand up and talk, mm. I can talk them out of hell mm. and bring them before the throne That's of right. God. That's right. We're going to evangelize and... We're going to extend God's love and we're going to bring them in, raise them up. Yeah. Your royal, holy nation. That's right. Royal that's priesthood. Right. We thank that's God. That's right. That's thank right. God. The Lord is doing something even around the church, and we are closed with this. Um, there's new apartments that are on the street on Barnaby, and there's going to be more apartments that surround the church all up and down Southern Avenue, and even not even within our immediate jurisdiction. We'll go to the highways and the byways and do what the Lord says because that's what we are mandated to do. We're mm -hmm. mandated. We're going to show it in our behavior. Your witness will speak how you love one. That's how we know. That's how they know that we are his disciples. Uh, the love we have for one another, we're going to love on each other. We're going to love on the people of God. Bring them in. You go and get them. Bring them in. And we're going to give them Jesus and lift them up to him. And their life would never, ever, ever be the same. Ever be the same. For the year 2025. Yes. Yes, speak we, Jesus. We have talked about the uh, year of uh, grace and favor. Yes. Leave no one behind. It's going to be our thing. For 2025. 2025. Leave no, no one. one. No one. No one. We're coming for the one. All caps, We're coming. Leave no one behind. No one God behind. Bless you. God Thank bless you. God bless you too. I love you. Let me talk. Always. On your podcast. <laughs> it's, it's yours. It's the temple of praise. It's ours. It's the temple God nation. Bless you. Love you. <laughs> we love you. God bless you. Temple, get ready. Get ready to come to church. Make sure you remember your tithes and offerings. And we just thank God for you. See you in a minute. We love you. God bless you. <laughs>